Our lesson today is entitled Submit to God in Christ, and it's found in Philippians 1, uh, verses 12 through 21. This is Sunday School Lesson for January 20th. My name is Tony Miller, and our key verse for our lesson today is, and I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the gospel, the good news, Philippians 12. And I share with you my graphic, dear God, I want to make, I want to take a minute not to ask for anything, but simply to say, I submit to you, almighty God in Christ. Please let me never forget to be grateful for the things I have and patient for the things that I don't. Next slide. So the aim of this lesson is to analyze Paul's circumstances, spreading the gospel despite other responses, decide to be faithful and forgive others, and rejoice in the opportunities to do God's work in the world through Jesus Christ. This is my YouTube channel, greater than 90 lessons in my archive. I ask if you would hit the subscribe and the bell and get these lessons automatically, hit the like as well. Uh, and hit the, uh, share these lessons uh, as you help to grow this channel. And obviously, I appreciate comments, any that you give us as we learn these lessons together. Next slide. So my lessons are always about the context and the content. There always are. We navigate our lessons verse by verse and we use the International Sunday School text as we traverse through these lessons. And my goal is that we all learn side by side as a Holy Spirit, our true teacher. Next slide. So as always, I provide you some measure of background for these lessons that include definition terms, theories, people, history, places, maps, and places. Definition typically lasts 13, 16 minutes, and uh, you always have the ability to fast forward to that point if you so choose. I think background is important, and thus the reason I provide it each time. Next slide. So time for some review of our lesson today. So the setting of this lesson, the gospel spread of Jesus has gone to the cross. There was a resurrection. Jesus was seen by Mary. Uh, after this resurrection, Jesus was seen by the disciples and his brothers. And uh, Jesus returned many times and is seen by over 500 people. And Jesus tells the uh, uh, comfort is going to come. He says that I will not leave you comfortless. And Jesus goes back to the Father after 40 days. And, and he tells about this comfort to come. And on the 50th day, the Holy Spirit comes like a rush and mighty wind. And the 120 people in the upper room are filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Ghost fills all the other folks that are in this region that have received the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in tongues that that uh, they've never spoken before. And the Spirit and the gospel is, is growing and is spreading. And tongues is a way that they're able to talk to everybody in the region. Next slide. And the Saul of Tarsus. As a central figure in our story today, the Saul is a zealous persecutor of the first century church. Uh, of those early believers and his goal is to stamp out this Jesus sect. He didn't like that they were uh, they were spreading this gospel and it was uh, it was against his Judaism. And while he was on his way to, uh, to Damascus to, to extradite some Christians back to uh, to Jerusalem, Saul was comforted by no one but Jesus. And Jesus uh, converted Paul, and what followed was the most dramatic conversion in church history. Saul of Tarsus became the apostle Paul and added missionary and believe to the unbelieving world and a fine example of faithful service in the face of fierce persecution, which we'll see today as well. And uh, Saul's education and background of the Pharisee and his Roman citizenship and his unwavering zeal all contributed to his success as a missionary. Uh, once those credentials and traits were subdued by the Lordship of Christ, he became this amazing man of God. Next slide. So lesson continues of Paul as this Paul, is the Saul of Tarsus becomes Paul and he witnesses the resurrection of the Lord Jesus on the way to Damascus, as I just mentioned, and he is commissioned as apostle to the nations, to the Gentiles. And Paul administers in Damascus, Syria and Arabia, and then Paul meets Peter in Jerusalem after this conversion. And then uh, Paul goes back to Tarsus for safety because they figure this guy cannot be that same guy that was persecuting the Jews and I mean the 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 the, the Christians and uh and ultimately goes back to Tarsus for safety and then Paul ministers 
uh, in Syria, in Tarsus, and Sicilia, and then Barnabas travels to Tarsus in order to meet up with Paul, the Saul of Tarsus is Paul, and then ultimately it is Paul and and uh, Paul and uh, and Barnabas they go to Antioch, teaching the, the the gospel, and then Barnabas and Saul are sent out. We find in Acts uh, thirteen next song. And the, and the gospel is continuing to setting, uh, spreading, and as, uh, they flee to Lystra and the Derby, preaching the gospel, and then Lystra, Paul and Barnabas are, are mistaken for gods. They come in and they're doing signs and wonders, and they're healing folks, and uh, and these people in Lystra, they think that they're gods, and then they try to they try to um, try to worship them. They wouldn't have it, and ultimately Paul is stoned in Lystra. They, they thought he was dead, but then he renders the city because he's bold like that. And then ultimately they depart, Paul and, and Barnabas would depart to Derby uh, preaching the gospel. And then to Jerusalem where there's a council and then they separate and now Paul and Silas continue to preach the gospel and they share the word, uh, planting churches, strengthening those churches. And there they go to Philippi where Paul meets Lydia. And I like to think uh, Dr. Luke's there in, uh, there in Philippi as well. And Paul and Silas in prison after casting out a demon from a slave girl, Acts 16. That's kind of, we'll talk about that in our lesson again as part of our lesson today. Next slide. So here's a map of uh, these journeys for the Apostle Paul that again from Jerusalem in the south all the way up through Damascus and and Antioch and the Tarsus where his hometown is in Lister and Derby. Antioch, this whole the Roman road all the way on to Philippi. Next slide. So this Philippi, Philippi. Uh, the Apostle Paul visited, uh, 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 the Apostle Paul's visit to Macedonia marked the first time he set foot on European soil. However, this was not the first time the gospel was proclaimed in Europe. Uh, again, again, thought, I believe Dr. Luke was there. In fact, the Macedonian call seemed to imply that there were already believers in Macedonia that needed help evangelizing their province. And Macedonia became a beachhead for Paul and his company to take the gospel further into Europe. As one writer commented, out of Macedonia, Alexander the Great once went to conquer the Eastern world, but later from Macedonia, the power of the castle went to conquer the Western world of Paul in Paul's day. And Philippi was a major city of Macedonia and it played an important role in the life and ministry of the Apostle Paul. He also had an effective and lasting ministry in the lives of the believers, the Lord Jesus Christ in Philippi. Next slide. So they went out this uh, i mentioned to you a few minutes ago about this casting off this demon one day paul and and luke and and, and silas were on their way uh, to prayer <coughs> excuse me and they were harassed by a slave girl uh possessed with the spirit of divination that apollo the god of prophecy and, uh, and the giver of oracles at his shrine in delphi inspired the spirit of this uh, young woman and um, paul cast a demon out of that girl and the owners of the slaves seized Paul and Silas. They didn't seize Luke, but they brought them before the magistrates of the forum because this woman, they were making money off of her and they were mad because he kind of took, got rid of their, their money trade. And they were accused the Jews of causing trouble in Philippi. They didn't like it because also Jews were doing this before and they all counted them as troublemakers. Next slide. So Paul and Silas are now in this jail there. They've been beaten and thrown into jail after this young uh, woman that they've cast a demon out. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And then suddenly, a great earthquake and the power was so powerful that they, the foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once, all the doors were opened and everyone chains were unfastened the chains fell off and when the jailer was waking out of his sleep he saw the prison doors were open and drew up his sword was about to kill himself thinking the prison had escaped verse 20 and paul shouted and said don't do not hurt yourself uh we are all here and then the jailer called for torches and rushed in and trembling in the field they fell down before paul and silas and after he brought them out of the inner prison he says sirs what must i do to be saved and this uh, prison guard ultimately took Paul and 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 and, uh, and, uh, and Silas and he dressed their wounds and, and he ultimately took them home to, to eat. So I share with you singing at midnight when confronted by impossible circumstances. Remember that prayer and praise and can powerfully deliver and set us free. As we approach midnight, do not fear, do not give up, keep singing, keep praying, keep looking for the intervention of God. Next slide. 
So I share with you as I've been doing each week that these uh, Judaizers were one of the issues that Paul was having and he had again here in Philippi, his first century uh, belief, uh, uh, um, uh, most of them were Jews that they want to suck people back into Judaism and also they were trying to, to discredit Paul and Paul was dealing with these folks as he dealt with many of these through the church they founded in this first century churches. He called them wolves and sheep clothing as he tried to convert people back. To Judaism. Next slide. <clears throat> so we fast forward ten years, seven to ten years, where we how we get to where we are now. Paul writes this lesson to the Philippians. This is one of the four prison uh, epistles that he wrote while he was in prison in Rome. We believe that it's in Rome, so thus it happened. He was in prison many times, so we're not sure if it was seven to ten years. So again, it's just written as one of the prison uh, epistles, the letters that Paul wrote to his people, to his friends, to those in Philippi, the Philippians, thus the letter to the Philippian church. Next slide. So background to our lesson today, that a background to Philippians in chapter one is where we are today in our lesson. And again, we, we start in Philippians one verses 12 through 21, I believe, and I think we're gonna expand it out. So I share with you from the Amplified, and we'll give you the verse, first 11 verses to give us an on-ramp into our lesson today, that Paul and Timothy, servants of, of Jesus Christ. Paul writes to all God's holy people in Christ, Jesus and Philippi, together with overseers and deacons, verse three, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, thanksgiving and prayer. And verse three, and I thank God every time I remember you. In all of my prayers for all of you, and I always pray for you with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Great words. Verse 7, and this is right for me to feel this way about you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I'm in chains or the defending or confirming the gospel, all gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. Verse eight. God can testify how long for how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth and sight. Verse ten, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the, the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. A great prayer that Paul has for his this church in Philippi. Next slide. So that's our background, about 13 minutes to this time, uh, and now we are into our Sunday school lesson today, and we began in uh, our lesson is entitled Submit to God in Christ, Philippians uh, chapter 1, verses 12 through 21. And I, like I said, I'm going to extend it out a little bit. So again, in chapter 1, verse 12, and now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that, uh, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. So Paul is trying to tell these people, it's the, his friends, is uh, the, these believers in Philippi, that he says that now he's in jail. So I mentioned this is a prison epistle that he wrote from jail. And he says that I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what happened to me, that it actually serves to the advance the gospel. So sometimes a setback is a setup for the very next thing that God has for you. So don't always look at the circumstances that you're in, because often God has a plan that includes the calamities that you're constant, you're, you're, uh, you're in at the moment. Next slide. So, and we learned that with even the Apostle Paul. I share with you a couple, I'm Apostle John. <clears throat> I share with you a couple of weeks back that John, the Apostle John, that he was uh, doing just like Paul. He was, he, he was sharing the gospel. He was not afraid of, he was not ashamed of the gospel. And he was sharing the gospel. 
and 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 ultimately in Rome that the that they tried their best to kill him and nothing was working and then they they decided to to throw him in a vat of boiling oil. Uh, and 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 when they threw the apostle John in a boil in a vat of boiling oil, nothing happened. Uh, and uh, and 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 thus they they had to exile him to the Isle of Patmos. And then as it, when it, after it happened that. That, that the, an audience of in the Colosseum were converted to Christianity after witnessing this miracle, that this man did not die. So they, they exiled him into the Isle of Patmos, and there God took that circumstances, and he gave Paul this great vision, the, the vision that is the book of Revelation, of the events that will happen in the end of days. Next slide. So I'll share with you again this verse. 12 and now I want you to know brother that my circumstances have turned out for the spreading of the gospel that is this message that Paul is sharing that that sometimes God has a plan to fix our calamities next slide Sunday school lessons submit to God in Christ Philippians 1 verses 13 through 14 and this week <clears throat> I'm sharing in the NIV and you know, each week I I I, I change um, you know whatever the translation I use. Like each week I I probably study in three four translations, and I just try to find one that gives us some clarity for the lesson. So each week I have different translations. It doesn't mean that I I favor one above the other, and I like King James as well. It's not as great as studying, but we all the goal is to try to get an understanding from the text. And thus, this week we're in the NIV. So. Again, Philippians 1, verses 13 through 14. And as a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guards and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And verse 14, and because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. That then I said, we're not worried about Paul is in chains and Paul has no fear, so we should have no fear that God is with him. God has showed him favor that even in all of the circumstances of his life, that he is still blessed by God. So thus they get some measure of boldness as a result of the of the uh, what they witnessed from the apostle Paul. Next slide. So they too are not ashamed of the gospel. Of Jesus Christ for it is a power of God for salvation to everyone that believe and Paul writes that to the Roman church and there and all of these folks in Philippi probably no doubt believe the same as Paul is in this jail actually he's there in Rome and there is again his great words to his people <coughs> more that Paul writes during this time in prison for we know that God causes all things to work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose so in all of our calamities and all of our circumstances and all of the issues that beset us in this lifetime it's always have good have comforting words and Paul leaves us with great words of of comfort that God causes all things to work together for the good for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose that even in the most dire circumstances wherever they are whatever they are that God has the best for us and he will work it out on our behalf and thus Paul probably has emboldened as he is in prison and those who see him also get a little bolded as well because of, of Paul's wisdom next slide so prison couldn't stop the gospel of Jesus Christ from going forward it is a power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Nothing can stop it. Again, Paul writes to the folks in Philippians 1, verses 12 through 14. Next slide. Sunday school lessons submit to God in Christ. Philippians uh, 1, verses 15 through 17. And it is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. And Paul writing to this church in Philippi. And he tells us some of these people they just they're just envious are, are some people uh, they, they don't like that Paul is, is is so successful and he's 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 the, the most successful preacher of the gospel and most, 
and uh, and he's showing the most promise and and, and some out of rivalry because they want to be like him, they want to be like Mike, they want to be like Paul, uh, but others out of goodwill. Verse 16, but the latter do out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. In verse 17, and the former preach out of self-ambition, not sincerity, opposed, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in these chains. And, and then here's the thing, there's a lot of men who preach the gospel. And uh, we know that today in our in our day that some people are pulpit pimps or some people are pull are, are preached because they think of there's some financial gain, but but uh, that's not the the essence. Paul said that it's not should never be done by selfish ambition. And I share with you a little bit of a, a graphic on the other side. Your gifts are not about you. Leadership is not about you. Your purpose is not about you. A life of the significance is about serving those who need your gifts. They need your leadership and they need your purpose. And that Paul is giving the, this, these believers in this first century church in Philippi some wisdom. And he says, as even though they do it, that it's still about the gospel. Next slide. <clears throat> that Paul asked, us as well that we question our motives and he's asking these what are their motives next slide Sunday school lessons submit to God in Christ Philippians 1 verse 18 but what does it matter the important thing is that every that is that in every way whether it's by false motives or true Christ is preached and because of this I rejoice yes I will continue to rejoice that he says that even if it's out of their vanity, even if it's out of some um, some vain uh, motives, that Paul says that it doesn't really matter. That at the end of the day, that 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 God will judge their 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 work in the end of days. But it's more about those who will be converted because of the preaching of the gospel. And Paul he says, I rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That Paul is rejoicing because at least the gospel is preached, whether the motives are false or true. Next slide. That is about thy will be done. It's about God's will being done. And the motives are immaterial that he tells this church at Philippi. Next slide. That it's all about the gospel and nothing else next slide so sunday school lesson submit to god in christ philippi verse philippians 1 uh, verse 19 and for i know that through your prayers and god's provision of the spirit of jesus christ that holy spirit the holy ghost that what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance that god that paul is confident in God and he's confident in the prayers of his people in Philippi in Philippi that when God's warriors go down on their knees the battle is not over it has just begun that the that the that the devils in hell that the devils in this world that they get a little nervous when those warriors go down on their knees because something's about to happen that God is going to change the atmosphere of what's going on and there's deliverance coming next slide and I share with you Romans 8 26 through 27 likewise the spirit also helps in our weakness for we did not know what to pray for as we are but the spirit itself makes the intersection for us with groanings which cannot be uttered for he who searches the hearts knows what minds of the spirit is because he makes intersection for the saints according to his will. He said that's again, he says that through this power of the Holy Spirit, through the prayers and the power of the Holy Spirit, he knew that there he knows that there is going to be a deliverance and he's not worried. Paul's not worried. He's not ashamed of the gospel. He's not worried because he knows that prayers and through the power of the Holy Spirit that he can be delivered from his circumstances. Next slide. That Paul 
says it's about this intercession that he wants them to intercede for him with his prayers that he says when they those warriors go down on their knee knees that they give this intercession and this intercession that the lord alone is delivered offers its deliverance and its strength and, and that's our our goal as believers as well that our goal is to be intercessory to be intercessory prayers for those and even when the man of god stands behind the sacred desk that is our job to, to hold him up in prayer, that ask that God will give him the wisdom to say the words that will cause the changing of hearts in the sanctuary, that those who come to, to church on purpose, that those who come into the presence of Almighty God on purpose, that they would find him in this place. And that is our, our, our prayer of intercession, that, that, that we intercede for those who don't know the Lord, who those who are seeking him, for those who, who are, who are have sickness in their body that those who have demons in their body we intercede on their behalf and and we ask the lord god just like paul is saying that that he believed that the prayer and through the power of the holy spirit that there is always a deliverance the deliverance and strength by the power of almighty god and paul is a believer in this intercession and he says that he tells the people in philippi that that he is grateful for their intercessory for their prayer and their pre know that their prayer and through the power of the Holy Spirit that he will be restored back into their presence. Next slide. Sunday school lesson, submit to God in Christ, Philippians chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. And these are the last two verses of our lesson, but I'm going to continue on. And I eagerly expect the hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but I have sufficient courage so that now and always Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death in verse 24 for to me to live in christ and to die is gain that that, that yeah I, I it's right now that I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ i will proclaim the gospel of jesus christ till i die that i will proclaim it day and night and if i die that is how it happens but to live is Christ, but to die, I go into immediate presence of the Lord. And, and Paul is, is not ashamed of the gospel. And here he shares to this first century church in Philippi. And he gives them these words that he says, it'd be far better that I would be with you. But he says, but the goal is to share the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is far better. Next slide. So I share with you. And I share with you these last two verses that what a, what do, what is your disposition and how would you take this? That it's like uh, you are in a circumstance where someone has a gun to your head. And, and, and how would you respond? How would you respond? And Paul is here in the prison and he knowing that it ultimately he may lose his life for the sake of the gospel. And if what would you do if this was your circumstance, that you are in the position that someone has a gun to your head and they ask you the question, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ the Messiah? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Is Jesus Christ God who came in the flesh? Then what would be your response? What would be your response? Would you be have the boldness that Paul has? He says in verse 20, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed. But I have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body. Will we exalt Christ in our body, whether it's life or death? <clears throat> and for me to live in Christ and to die is gain. That, that, that Paul gives us the, the courage that if we are facing this dilemma, that we should have the courage just like him, that we would say the affirmative. Next slide. So we finished these uh, these this text, but I, I'm sharing with you uh, 22 through 24. And Paul writes it for if I am to go on living in the body, this will be meaningful labor for me. But yet, what shall I choose? How do I know that Paul is still saying and, and still contemplating that even in that circumstances? In the circumstance I just shared with you, he says, what shall I choose? Would you choose to continue to do that? 
Will you choose to continue to serve the Lord? Will you continue to proclaim Jesus even in that circumstances? In verse 23, I'm, I'm torn between the two. My desire to part to be with Christ, that he wants to get out of that circumstances, but it's far more necessary to remain in this body, that he wants to, he would love to be able to get out. He would love to be able to get out of circumstances, but if he, but if again, he has to die. And if he's going to die, it's better that remains to be able to continue to preach the gospel and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and convert folks over and over again. And, and you're just a parent. You're a parent that did it. It's far better that you would you would be able to continue to serve your children, to be able to, 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 to raise your children. It's far better that you remain in this body, but to live with Christ, but to die is gain. And I share with you, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it probably would be a better as a poll question. Then what would you do? I hope that you choose Christ. And that's what Paul says, that, that our goal is to submit to God in Christ, because that is the power. That is the power of our life. That is the power of our circumstance. That is our goal in this life. Next slide. <clears throat> so I'm throwing you that curveball. I, don't, I apologize. That was not the purpose of this lesson, but this curveball kind of threw me, and I felt I needed to share it with you. Next slide. So what would you do? Would you do it? Think about it. Next slide. So what shall I choose? Would you choose to stand on his word? You know, we know that the gospel says, the message says that greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. That we can stand on that word. Or we know that all things work together for the good of him, those who love uh, him and a call according to his purpose. Again, we would want to make sure we made the right decision. And we will feel that no weapon formed against us will prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment and thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord, Isaiah 54 and 17, that what shall you choose? I don't know. Do you know? And Paul, I threw you this curveball just for you to contemplate that how would you respond if that was your circumstance, that you have an opportunity to get out or to serve God. Again, he says to live is Christ and to die is gain. Next slide. That the way out is that intercessory prayer, the way out of every circumstance of our life, the way out of every calamity, the way out of every every um, death and every illness and every bad report and every uh, uh, job interview, every test, every opportunity that we have, that we should have this prayer, that we should ask folks to pray for us, that we should seek the Lord while, while we have the blood running in our veins, that we should continue to always look for the Lord, because the Lord alone provides the deliverance for our circumstance. He is our strength, and his word is our joy. Next slide. So our lesson today is submit to submit to God in Christ, Philippians 1, 12 through 21. And I share with you that today, God, today I submit my mind my eyes, my mouth, my ears, my hands, my feet, my heart, and my whole life to you. Use it for your purposes. That should be our prayer. That should be our life. That we should submit ourselves to God in Christ. Next slide. So, commentary for our lesson today that uh, Paul acknowledged the difficulty of maintaining his joyful perspective. He realized that it's only through the Philippian prayers and the help of the Spirit that he could rejoice at the gospel spread despite his imprisonment and other preachers' bad motives. These things not only embolden his preaching, but also embolden his hope for his life. And it should as well. It's our life as well, and we should be emboldened because of uh, these words. And Paul desires to release from prison. He trusted that the result of his legal proceedings associated with his incarceration, whether free or chained, will result in the glory of God. He had the confidence of being in Christ, and Paul came 
to the conclusion that living in Christ does not free one from problems and difficulties and persecutions or adversities, but Christ is the totality of the believer's life. He is assured that his life was guaranteed in Christ and that his experience had a greater purpose as does ours, as do ours, that we have a greater purpose than just to sit in those pews each Sunday. We have a greater purpose than just to go to church and get dressed and go. We have a greater purpose to share the word of God, to study, to show ourselves approved. Next slide. And our purpose in this life is the same as Paul's, that we are commanded the Great Commission to go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. That our goal is to share this gospel message that we've been blessed with. That we share, that go and make the disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our, and our, and our charge is to teach them, to share with them our experiences uh, that, that everything that God has commanded to you, that find in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, that we are that living testimony. That we don't have to have all the words in order to be able to share the gospel. We, our life is a living testimony. We can share what we've learned. We share the, 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 how God has taken us from here to there. That that is this, our purpose in this life. That we are living testimonies to the power of God, to the power of prayer, to the power of the Holy Spirit, to the deliverance that God has the blessings that God has, the word of God that God has for us, the, 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 the everlasting life that God has for us, that we will not die, but we'll go and turn into eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Next slide. And that is our Sunday School lesson for this week. Submit to God in Christ, Philippians 1, verses 12 through 21. I hope there's something that you've learned this week that, you know, it's about us being able to trust in God and submitting to God and believing God and believing the power of the Holy Spirit and believing the redemptive power of prayer and believing that it's far better that we serve God because at the end of the day, it's not about what we have in this life, that this life is just like a vapor. It appears for a moment and goes away. And my prayer for you is something you've learned today, strengthen your faith. As the Lord provides all of your needs and that you learn something worthy of sharing. And that you enjoy learning about submitting to God in Christ. And that you are encouraged to learn with us. And I ask you please hit the subscribe button and the bell and get these lessons automatically. And I share with you as always a benediction, Heavenly Father. Send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts to bring glory to your name. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. It's in his name we do pray and ask these things always. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Amen.